If you would like to take the blindness out of your next blind date, one of these young men could help you. What is your name, please? My name is Jeff Tarr. My name is Jeff Tarr. My name is Jeff Tarr. Only one of these young men is the real Jeff Tarr. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth. To Tell the Truth is brought to you this evening by Anison, the headache tablet to relieve pain. So relax tension, calm nerves. Anison. And now here's your host, Bud Collier. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Bud. Well, well, well. Open up your envelope, if you will, and follow along with me as I read from my copy of this first story. I, Jeff Tarr, am a college student and co-founder of a unique date bureau. Its purpose is to take the blindness out of blind dates by matching up young people with similar interests and viewpoints. It is all very scientific and is done with the aid of a questionnaire called the Quantitative Personality Projection Test. After the interested boy or girl fills out the questionnaire, the findings are fed into a high-speed computer, which then automatically pairs off each client with up to 14 ideal dates. My partner and I began our careers as punch card cupids about a year ago and helped finance our fledgling company with the $500 I won on the television program Password. Starting out at our own university, the project is now nationwide and has more than 100,000 names on file. We call our Boy Meets Girl service Operation Match. Signed, Jeff Tarr. <laughs> and these three young men all claim to be Jeff Tarr. We'll start the questioning, if we may, with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you, Ben. N number three, you know, I never met anybody good through a blind date. Does your service have uh, good results? Oh, we're absolutely foolproof. We're about 90% effective. Well, that's great. Uh, n number one, do the people tell the truth on these questionnaires? Well, we've kind of improved on it, and uh, most of the time... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, most people don't tell the truth, and we've had... <laughs> We've had to make three questionnaires to catch up with the Well, as long as they match stuff. lives, I guess that's all right. Number two, have there been any marriages resulting from your matchmaking? Oh, yes, there have been several. There would have been more, but we're dealing with a young group, and we're a dating service, not a mating service. I see. Well, it put me in my place. <laughs> Tell me, uh, number three, does your university sanction this uh, matchmaking? Well, it's, it's not actually connected with the university, but they do uh, recognize initiative off campus, yes. Arson me. I, I, this is, the whole thing is... is, is it's a little hairy to me. Like, I, I, uh, I m married my sweet Carolyn six weeks ago, and two years ago I met her. I met her in a less scientific way. It was, what it was, I picked her up in a cheap bar. Now, <laughs> now number one, isn't it a little uh, antiseptic to, to, you know, fill out a whole bunch of forms and find someone that way? Well, I think you'll find that if your wife and you turn in forms separately, the odds are you'll both get matched. Now, number three, I've read about your thing in uh, one of the magazines, and it said that the, the people are apt to lie. A guy will write that he's very handsome, and then the girl meets him, and he's bald and has skinny arms and a pot belly. Now, uh, that's a bad beginning, right? Right, but uh, we do give up to 14 choices. So oh. therefore, uh, if you don't like one, why well, you got 13 others? Meanwhile, you killed two weeks, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number two, is there an age limit on your service? Yes, the oldest age is 27. Oh. Just make it, Kitty. We can all just make it. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, do you think that because all your people are so young that what Orson said is true, the young people today don't mind the scientific approach to love? I don't think so. I think it's just that most college kids have found that blind dates are really a pretty bad thing to go through. Thank you. Number three, a famous uh, television personality on What's My Line had a show called Blind Date. Do you know her name? Arlene Francis, right? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, number two, why do you call it quantitative instead of qualitative? It seems to me that you want qualities, not quantities. Of well, it's both quality and quantity, but the big point is we need millions of people to do it. I see. Tom Poston. 
Well, you don't, number two, you don't have millions of people doing this, do you? No, I mean that, you know, sort of as a large number of people. Uh -huh. Actually, you need to have a good sized sample to do it effectively. Uh, uh, number two, again, there was a television show, you know, one, one in, a, in a, a regular weekly show that, that had this idea on fairly recently. Did you happen to see that, or do you know anything about it? It was used you know, as... The as usual reference is people are funny. Pardon me? The usual reference is people are funny. No, that was, this was uh, John Forsyth's show. Number one, uh, w when he said that about, uh, how do you charge when you're going to uh, give somebody this, this uh, service? How do you charge? What do you... Well, I charge us $3 for filling out the form and mailing it in. And we don't guarantee results, but that gets five names. That's it. It's time for you now to mark your ballots. So mark them immediately, without change and without any consultation. Just simply vote on the information you have. Vote, if you will, now for number one, number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Are all ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two, bud, because he looked like he, he would appreciate Alan Ludden more than the other two. <laughs> I figured that these, this guy has got to appreciate Alan Ludden. After all, he started him in business with passwords. So. <laughs> Thank you, Cat. I like number three. He's so jolly, but I didn't vote for him. I, too, voted for number two because he said things about reference, and college kids always talk about frame of reference and stuff like that. Orson Bean. Well, I... Number two doesn't appreciate Alan Ludden. How can you say a thing like that about somebody? <laughs> I voted for number one, however. I think that... Uh... <laughs> He looks like an American ingenuity. I tell you, the, I'm an old man tonight, Francis. Keep, did you see his number one, Kitty? With the Cupid arrow through it? Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number two because he looks to me like the kind of a boy who would want to take all the romance and the mystery and the uncertainty out of dating. Aww. Uh, well, you've nearly gone unanimous on number two, then, didn't you? That's the kind of a guy I think would appreciate Alan Ludden. <laughs> And the votes are all in and the minds are made up. Let's find out now which one of these gentlemen in truth is Jeff Tarr. Will the real Jeff Tarr please stand up? Uh. <laughs> oh my, you might start things off tonight, panel. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? Well, my name is Andy Grants, and I'm the manager of a bartending agency that hires out Columbia University students for private parties. Oh. <laughs> Number three, what is your real name, and what do you do? My name is Gary Stevens. I'm one of the good guys on New York's WMCA. Jeff, let me ask you something. Do you plan to go right along with this after you graduate from college? Yes, sir, I do. Make, it's grown that far so that you can make it a business? It's gone very well. It's across the country, and we have offices in Chicago and Boston, New York. Your heart. And we've been very lucky, and I tried for a while. Well, We're our headquarters. Continue to go back. <laughs> We're Backstage. <head> Backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Checking the score, we find there was only one incorrect vote, but that's worth $250. And gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> we'll meet our next team of challengers. And let's meet our next team of challengers. <laughs> What is your name, please? My name is Anthony Angelo III. My name is Anthony Angelo III. My name is Anthony Angelo III. Follow along again with your copies of this one, if you will, panel. I, Anthony Angelo III, come from a family that has been making decorative candles for over 300 years. We make candles which range in price from a few cents to thousands of dollars. Our firm manufactured the funeral candles for Rudolph Valentino and Enrico Caruso, and festive candles for the wedding of Charles Lindbergh and the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Also, we made the largest candle in the world, a 4,600-pound, 12-foot-tall monster for the opening of a Texas department store. My grandfather created one candle that can never be lit, a bust of England's Queen Victoria, made entirely of beeswax. For the past 30 years, my family has made candles for the Vatican, St. Peter's in Rome, and London's Westminster Abbey. 
At Christmas time, we make candles in the shape of snowballs, Christmas trees, and Santa Claus. During the recent blackout in the Northeast, my wife had a baby. The doctor delivered our new son by the light of an ornamental candle I had given him as a present just the week before. Signed, Anthony Agello. <laughs> Gentlemen, all claim to be Anthony Agello III. We'd start the cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you, bud. Uh, number two, that's a charming story about your wife. You, you obviously are inextricably tied up with, with, ca with candles. What is the difference between tallow and wax? Well, tallow is uh, fat from an animal, and just wax is plain wax. Uh, number three, what is the difference between a taper and a candle? A taper is a candle. There's no difference? No difference. Uh, number three, well, number one, I'm sorry, where does all this beeswax come from? Uh, mostly from California. Number two, how much is it per pound? Five, uh, $5.50 a pound. And, and transported to, the, to here as well? Yes, that's right. Number three, how long does it take to gather that much beeswax? Uh, unlimited amount. Tom Poston. Okay. Uh, that was... Number uh, one, when, when number two said that it's just plain wax, what does just plain wax mean to you? What does that mean, like just plain wax? Uh, well, the only pure wax we have today is beeswax. What is the kind of wax that you use mostly, let's say? Oh, well, to make the ordinary candle, we use paraffin va wax with uh, stearin in it. I don't know what that is, but I'll take your word for it. Number three, where does that wax come from? Where, what, what is the source of that wax, paraffin wax? Paraffin comes from petroleum and oil, and stearic comes from fatty. I see. Number two, I saw uh, at a lovely dinner party I attended last night, I saw uh, candles in the shape of a honeycomb. What is that? Well, it's a, just a honeycomb design. It's made from a mole. Thank you, Kat. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number one, why are those candles funny? I mean, those round candles there, they're spirally. What, what, what are they, well, they for? They were shaped underwater while they, were still, while they were still hot. In other words, in the cooling process, they were shaped under the water. Oh, I see. Number two, I've seen that statue of Queen Victoria before. Where did I see it? You saw it in the, in the studio. No, I did not. Number three, what shop did I see that, sh that statue in? You saw it at 100 East 50th Street. Hmm. Number one, <laughs> tell me about bayberry candles. Where does the wax come from for bayberry candles? From the bayberry bush. Thank you. Uh, what does it Arson B. Yeah, I, I, am a, I am a great advocate of candles. When New York was blacked out, it never looked more beautiful as it did. Even in the White Tower, the guy <laughs> has got candles there. And every, it brings out a gentleness. Yeah. And you want onions? Yeah, give me onions. All right. <laughs> yeah, I think it's... Number three, uh, uh, why is there no such a thing as a dripless candle, truly? You can pay a fortune, and there's no such thing as a really dripless candle, is Correct. There? Well, then why do you pay a fortune? Why do I pay a fortune for dripless candles, number three? The candles do not drip unless there's a draft, large air conditioning units running. That's it. Number one, what was the disaster? That's it. Flying wallaby. It was <laughs> a <terrible laughs> cruise. Time for you now to try for onions with your hamburgers. But mark your ballots, if you will, please. Mark them at once, without change, without any consultation whatsoever. Just vote now, please, for number one. You all voted? Number no, two. Or number three. Ballots all marked. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I knew I had seen that statue before, but I didn't realize that, uh, that until Peggy asked that I knew where I had seen it before. There's a beautiful... It's in the Waldorf yeah. Hotel. Uh, you know, the store is. A gorgeous candle. I wonder if that's his shop. I guess it must be. Peggy. Well, I voted for number three because of that statue of Queen Victoria. I couldn't believe that that was made out of wax. It looks as though it's really made out of some kind of marble. It's terrific. Orson B. I voted for number three because he <coughs> said uh, a taper is a candle, you know, and he said it with great uh, authority. Like he's uh, 300 years of candles behind him. <laughs> Kitty. I voted for number three because of his, um, his answers and um, because I thought he looked like a gentleman who just had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Unanimous, the panel goes unanimous. Let's see whether it stands well for them or ill, as it has happened both ways before. As we learn now, which of these three gentlemen is Anthony Agello III? Will the real Anthony Agello III please? Stand up. Oh, you smart 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, I'd like to find out how you got that marbling effect in the colors on the on the folds here on Queen Victoria's shoulders. Well, I can't tell you too much because it's over 50 years old and oh. my grandfather sculptured it. Well, were the points on her crown broken on another statue that he took now, it from? Or? When we transported to Britain a few times in transportation, it uh, it snapped. Oh, sorry. And we didn't want to fix it because of the fact that it wouldn't hold its antiquity in it. Yeah. Sure. Well, it's great. It's terrific. Thank you. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Harris Rivetto, and I'm co-owner of Rivetto's Restaurant in Yorktown Heights, New York. Thank you, sir. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is George De Maria, and I teach discotheque, discotheque dancing for Killer Joe Pirro. Oh. Checking the score, we find that the panel covered themselves with glory in this round. They were all correct. There were no incorrect. In that case, there still is $150 coming to you. And our sincere thanks for making our evening a bright one and a happy one. Goodbye, and God bless you. Now, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Gregory Deutsch. My name is Gregory Deutsch. My name is Gregory Deutsch. Follow along with your copies of this one, if you will, please, panel. I, Gregory Deutsch, am a composer and singer. I wrote my first song when I was three years old, and at the age of nine became the youngest person ever allowed to join ASCAP. Up to now, I have written over 30 songs, including I Asked the Skylark, and My Little Music Box. My latest song, entitled Christmas is a Birthday, has just been recorded by Burl Ives, the Harry Simeon Chorale, and the Ray Charles Singers. Signed, Gregory Deutsch. Have these three young men, all of whom claims to be uh, Gregory Deutsch. We'll start with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you, bud. How old are you, number one, may I ask? I'm 13. Number two, please? 15. And number three? I'm 11. 11 years old. My goodness. You've been in ASCAP for two years, huh? Yeah. <laughs> number three, where did you learn to play the piano? I presume you play the piano. Well, yeah, a little bit. Where did you learn to play? Well, lessons. Uh-huh. Where are you from, number three? Oh, Manhattan. Number two? Manhattan. Number one, please? Manhattan. Where did you learn to play the piano, number one? If you play the piano. Oh, uh, yes, I play a little. I, uh, I went to several schools. Uh -huh. <laughs> Peggy Cass. Thank you. Number two, what's BMI? I would not know. Thank you. Uh, number three, was your father a songwriter? Yes. Oh. Uh, number one, have any of your songs been big hits? Uh, well, not really yet. I think for this one. Uh, number three, who publishes your music? Well, several different companies, oh. uh, like Pride Music or Triangle Music. Thank you. Uh, number two, do you know where the Brill Building is? No, I don't believe so. Thank you. Number one, are you under, rec un under contract to any particular recording company? Uh, under contract? Yeah, I mean, like, who, 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 who put your records out? Uh, well, uh, three record companies. Okay, thank you. Orson Bean. Uh, number three, uh, this is something I've always wanted to know. If you write a song and it's recorded by Burl I say, and it plays in a jukebox, do you get anything? I uh, know. Do you get anything when a disc jockey plays your song on the radio? Not unless it's payola. <laughs> <laughs> number one, what is payola? Uh, I don't really know. You're a good boy, number one. <laughs> number one, again, uh, uh, you're no relation to Helen Deutsch, are you? No. All right. Uh, number two, the Kitty Carlisle. Number two, do you agree with that, that you don't get any money if your record is played on the air? I don't. You don't get any money? No. I didn't. One. Really? One, do you agree with that? Uh, no. <clears throat> you don't. Number two, do you go to um, a music school? Excuse me, me? You go to a music school? Uh, yes. Where? Uh, professional Children's School. Thank you. Uh, number three, you said that your father was a songwriter. Yes. Does he help you with your songs? Well, I a try little... not to. <laughs> <laughs> number one, do you write the lyrics as well That's as the That's all the time we have. I'm sorry to say it's time for you all to mark your ballots now. So write your own lyrics, if you will, to figure out who's the real one. Vote now for 
number one, number two, or number three. All right, ballots all marked. Now they are all right. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I, I thought the boys were so darling. I, I, uh, I don't know where he got that payola thing, but he doesn't understand that they don't pay him. <laughs> <laughs> he pays them. <laughs> Thank you, Cat. Well, I voted for number three. He's so sophisticated, and he looks like a songwriter to me. Arson, what about you? Well, number two didn't know BMI, which is one of the big things like ASCAP. Now, that, number three didn't... I believe that you do get paid, but he knew payola, and he bandies that around. I think it would be number three. Could be number one. I voted for number two because... <laughs> Because it's Christmas, bud. <laughs> Arthur, I take so many trips around Robin Hood's barn with you, I wouldn't know any other way. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number one because he said that you do get paid from your performances, and I believe that's the way ASCAP works. Now, number two said he went to music school, and, but I still think it's number one, and he has a very serious, deep kind of musical look. All right, the votes are all in and the minds are solidly made up. And this time, it's uh, pretty well split. Gregory Deutsch has graciously consented to sing Christmas as a birthday for us. So, will the real Gregory Deutsch please take the stage? that you've brought a very special significance to this Christmas over all others for us. And we thank you for that. Thank you. Number two, what is your real name and what do you real... By the way, before I ask him that, this young man is uh, a young man very closely related to Emery Deutsch, who was a famous band man, and his, yes. his theme song was uh, When a Gypsy Makes His Violin Play, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, well known. Right. Oh, right. Right. And a good friend of mine, as a matter of fact. <laughs> You wish him a Merry Christmas for us, William. Tell, tell him he should well be proud of you. I sure will. Number two, now, what is your real name and what do you really do? I'm Bob Casey and I'm a sophomore at St. Francis Prep High School. Thank you, sir. Number three, what, what is your pixie name and what do you do? <laughs> My name is Miles Chapin and I'm in the sixth grade at Dalton School. And no payola. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we thank you all, and uh, checking the score, we find you did the best so far tonight. There were three incorrect votes at $250 each. That's 750 bucks you take along with you, and our blessings on you for a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for being with us. Good night. God bless you. thing to say to you, panel, and to you, audience, Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh -huh. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Don't forget to join us the same time next week. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon in the daytime show. And in the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Right. To tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.
Meet attractive Jane Goodall, who gives the world its first close look at wild chimpanzees in a National Geographic special in color tomorrow night. <laughs> to Tell the Truth has been brought to you by new Drift Stand 12-hour capsules for head cold misery and for relief of nasal congestion. Johnny Olsen speaking. This program is pre-recorded.